Fix and Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. We're the sauce on your steak. We're the cheese in your cake. We put the spring in spring feed. Wait for it. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the pets in Springfield. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and gender non-conforming individuals to another episode of the Benjamin Dixon Show. I am your host, Benjamin Dixon. That <laughs> Now, you may ask, why would I play that clip? Why would I play that? That was a mashup put together by a comedian from the UK who couldn't believe his ears. Nor could I, nor could anyone, that Donald Trump believed the lie that MAGA created so much so that he said it on the debate stage last night. That's how absolutely ridiculous and absurd the debate was and actually not the whole debate because Kamala Harris did a phenomenal job and I'll play some clips here coming up in a minute but can you believe that the Republican lie about the cats and dogs being eaten in Springfield Ohio was so successful that it fooled Donald Trump and this is why the creator made this this piece of content that I just played. I, I might have to play it again because I hurt myself laughing. It's gone super viral. And I really genuinely hope that this is all we remember of Donald Trump. When we look back five years from now, all we would have to remember of Donald Trump was that he was so absolutely foolish. And the MAGA movement was so terrifyingly efficient. They made that story so big, so quick. And their dear leader wasn't smart enough to keep the lie on social media. And so now we have this. We're the sauce on your steak. We're the cheese in your cake. We put the spring in spring feed. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the pets in Springfield. <laughs> it went so poorly last night for Donald Trump that even Fox News commentators Chris Wallace and Britt Hume had to admit that Donald Trump lost and lost in a spectacular fashion. Here is Chris Wallace. I didn't think I was ever going to witness a debate as devastating as the one that you and Dana uh, moderated back in, in June, where Joe Biden basically tanked his re-election campaign. I think tonight was just as devastating. I think that Kamala Harris pitched a shutout uh, on almost every subject I can think of. She shut Trump down on abortion. She shut Trump down on January 6th and democracy. She shut him down on national security and turned to the former president and said, the military leaders who served with you think that you're a disgrace. And then, as Dana mentioned, very powerfully at the end, made the point that she is the candidate of change. We need to turn the page from a, a decade of division and polarization on substance. I think she she pitched a shout out and I think she did on style as well. Brit Hume um, reluctantly admitted these things, but listen to what he had to say yeah. on Fox News now, today. Look, uh, make no mistake about it. Trump had a bad night. Uh, he rose to the bait repeatedly when she baited him, um, something I'm sure his advisors had begged him not to do. Um, you know, in the first debate when Biden attacked him, he just kept his cool and kept going. Um, in, this, in this debate, he rose to debate, and, and we heard so many of the old grievances that, that we'd long thought that Trump had learned were not winners politically. Mm -hmm. And there they all were, you know, talking about how he didn't lose the election and all that. I mean, so I, my sense is that uh, she came out of this in pretty good shape. Now, how long this will last and, and is, is, a, is anybody's guess. But um, for, for tonight, at least, this was pretty much her night. You're saying she had a good night. I'm saying she certainly did. MAGA is melting down for many reasons. One is because the moderators of last night's debate mildly fact-checked Donald Trump in real time. And I say mildly because to understand the full extent of the lies that Donald Trump told last night, you really have to listen to this clip of CNN's resident fact-checker, Daniel Dale, as he went through some 33 lies that were told just during the debate last night by Donald Trump. 
The, the fact check story of the night was the staggering dishonesty of former President Trump. I counted at least 33 false claims from him, and I think that might be a generous count, versus one, maybe two false claims from Vice President Harris, though she did also add a smattering of misleading or lacking in context claims. Let's go through this wild list of false Trump claims, John. Some of them are just egregious lies. On the economy, he said tariffs do not raise prices on Americans. They do. He said his tariffs raked in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Americans paid those billions. He said all of the jobs created under, under Biden and Harris are merely bounce back jobs from his administration. No, today's number is millions higher than back then. He said we have the worst inflation ever. No, the U.S. record is 23.7 percent. It is 2.9 percent today, down from a Biden Harris era peak of 9.1 percent. He said there was no inflation when he was president. Prices actually rose a cumulative 8 percent when he was president. Then on immigration, he said migrants in an Ohio city you heard are eating people's cats and dogs. That is a baseless, debunked Facebook rumor, just nonsense. He said Harris is border czar. No, she never was. She had a more limited immigration related diplomatic assignment. He said 21 million migrants have crossed the border under Harris. That is many millions too high. He said millions of people are entering monthly. There has not been a single month in the millions. He said many of the migrants are from foreign prisons or mental institutions. Even his own campaign has not been able to corroborate that. On abortion, he said every Democrat wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. That is just untethered to reality. Roe was supported by more than 80% of Democrats. Then he said every legal scholar wanted Roe overturned. A bunch of legal scholars have personally told me that they did not. He said Governor Tim Wall says it's fine to execute babies after birth. Walls never said that, and that is illegal in every single state. On foreign relations, he said $85 billion in U.S. equipment was left to the Taliban. That is a massive exaggeration. The Pentagon says the number is $7 billion. He said Iran didn't fund terror groups under him. Iran did, though its funding level did decline. He said he ended Russia's Nord Stream 2 pipeline. No, he did authorize sanctions, but after it was more than 90 percent complete and Russia resumed construction during his own presidency. He said the U.S. has provided far more aid to Ukraine than Europe has. It's the reverse. Europe has provided far more aid than the U.S. He said President Biden took millions of dollars from China. He did not. He added a false claim about Biden getting money from Russia. Again, nonsense. And he said Harris was sent to negotiate peace with Putin right before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Not only did that just not happen, the Kremlin says Harris has never once even spoken with Putin. Uh, Trump said he rebuilt the entire military. He did not. And then attacking Vice President Harris. He said Harris was the first candidate to drop out of the 2020 Democratic primary. There were actually 13 others who dropped out before her. He said pr Harris previously said she wasn't black. Total fiction. He said people don't attend Harris rallies. Thousands do indeed. He said people don't leave his own rallies early. Some do. And when it came to the 2020 election and its own legal troubles, he said there's so much proof the 2020 election was stolen. There is not. It was not. He said Nancy Pelosi turned down his offer of 10,000 National Guard troops on January 6th. There's no evidence she even got such an offer. It was Trump, not the speaker, who had the power to deploy the guard. He said no judge even looked at the merits of his allegations about the 2020 election. Some judges actually did, and his side still lost those cases. He said the Justice Department was behind a variety of legal cases it had actually nothing to do with. And then a whole bunch of other lies on a variety of topics. He said crime is skyrocketing, is actually declining sharply. He said the Central Park Five pleaded guilty. They did not. They were wrongly convicted. He said those men killed someone. It was not even a murder case. He said he saved Obamacare when actually he tried to kill it and then weakened it. He, and he said Harris has a plan to confiscate, quote, everybody's gun. She does not. In 2019, she supported a mandatory buyback of assault weapons in particular, and her campaign says she doesn't even support that now. John? Billionaire Bill Ackman, who's thrown all of his support behind Donald Trump, said this on Twitter, saying, why do the moderators only fact check Donald Trump and not Kamala Harris? Well, that's because Donald Trump told all of the lies last night. According to CNN's count, Kamala Harris made one false statement. Donald Trump made 33. It's really like what Abby Phillip of CNN tweeted. She said the following quote, just for your information, when there is asymmetrical lying, there will be asymmetrical fact checking. And this is what happened. But in fact, 
It really didn't happen much during the debate. The moderators really just pushed back against the most egregious lies. Speaking of big lies, Donald Trump has now flip-flopped yet again on whether or not he believed the election was stolen. Of course, it was not, but the big lie is essential to everything that MAGA stands for and believes. The big lie is the driving force. It's what animates their entire being, their essence. Some of the other big lies from last night debate that really stood out. This idea that migrants and immigrants in Ohio were eating dogs and animals. And I'm going to do an entirely different segment on that because it really just speaks to the fact that Donald Trump believes the nonsense that his supporters retweet and share all across social media. And it was really the most effective way to destroy the lie, the Haitian cat eating lie that was really facilitated by MAGA in a very disgusting way, but a very efficient and dangerous way. Donald Trump wasn't smart enough to keep that lie on social media. He took it all the way to the debate stage. Donald Trump is a liar. And Kamala Harris called it out from the beginning. She said, what you're going to hear tonight is a litany of lies. And that is exactly what happened. Here's why this is so important. Obviously, Donald Trump is a man who's never been held accountable for anything. He's always been able to make up things as he goes. He he's always been able to fudge the numbers because very few people have ever called him out in his entire lifetime. And now the United States of America has finally matured enough to be able to critique and criticize and call out the lies of a presidential candidate who breaks every rule, who destroys every bit of decorum, who has no respect for any norm or institution. The United States of America was really not ready to handle Donald Trump over this last decade. And it really took almost a decade for the media and for politicians and for just people in general to really figure out how do you handle a malignant liar in real time? How do you handle it? You have to be prepared for the lies, which means you have to know the truth and you have to know it in a way that Daniel Dell just really demonstrated. He's he was able to really pick apart every lie in real time. And while while MAGA is complaining about the moderator's mild pushback against Donald Trump's lies, the fact of the matter is, is if they had called out every lie he made, the debate would not have been able to continue because every other word that came out of the mouth of Donald Trump was a lie. And, and, and it really is just it's really jaw dropping to see so many people still supporting this liar, the liar in chief, especially amongst Christian organizations and evangelicals and all of these people who swear that they're participating in politics based on their morality. What of the lies? I had an opportunity to sit on a phone call and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this uh, in another segment, but I had an opportunity to sit on a prayer call that was facilitated by Paula White. She is Donald Trump's spiritual advisor. And as they were praying on that call, Donald Trump was on the call as well. And as they were praying for Donald Trump, they were speaking about God, let the truth be revealed. <laughs> Be careful what you pray for, because in this case, the truth was revealed. Donald Trump is a habitual liar. He is incapable of telling the truth, not only because he fudges the numbers on everything that he does, but it's because his entire essence, his entire being, everything that he is, everything that he stands for is a lie, a fiction a fabricated reality that no one has ever bust his bubble until last night when the moderators just fact checked him just once or twice during the entire debate. But when America turned around and said enough with the lies already, Donald, if you can't tell the truth, if you can't handle the truth, we'll handle it for you. We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon show right after this. Switch sides like even when I die, I'm a ride for the squad, let up ties in the hearse. I've been on a vibe kind of hard to describe. I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle with a time of my life. I'm never so packed for the stack, never lied on the back, got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen of the price of the Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon Show. 
visit us online at thebenjamindixonshow.com. Donald Trump talks about being able to end the war between Russia and Ukraine within 24 hours. But when he was pressed on the issue, notice he refused to answer the question because answering it truthfully would reveal that he is in the tank for Vladimir Putin. Clarifying the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and f- just get it done. All right. Negotiate a deal. If anyone was confused about that before, last night's debate performance made this extremely clear. Donald Trump would literally give Ukraine away. I believe the reason that Donald Trump says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. And that's not who we are as Americans. All over social media last night, account after account, you saw members of the Republican Party making it clear that they could no longer support the Republican Party if Donald Trump is their representative. If he is going to be their candidate, they would not support the Republican Party. And so more and more people are converting over to support Kamala Harris. She mentioned this in last night's debate in regards to the 200 former Republican officials that worked with Donald Trump, Mitt Romney, John McCain, etc., all who have endorsed her. Uh, You know, this is, I think, one of the reasons why in this election, I actually have the endorsement of 200 Republicans who have formally worked with President Bush, Mitt Romney, and John McCain, including the endorsement of former Vice President Dick Cheney and Congress member Liz Cheney. Now, I'm not fond of Dick Cheney. I'm not fond of Dick Cheney at all. In fact, I'm having a very visceral reaction to his endorsement of Kamala Harris. But at the end of the day, when we consider we're talking about the end of democracy, what Donald Trump is talking about is ending democracy. Donald Trump has said he wants to suspend the Constitution. And Donald Trump has made it clear that he is in love, enamored and impressed by strongmen and dictators. It is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear. They can manipulate you with flattery and favors. And that is why so many military leaders who you have worked with have told me you are a disgrace. And as Kamala Harris pointed that out so perfectly and eloquently last night, I believe it became clear in the minds of more and more Republicans that they absolutely cannot stand idly by. And for the sake of a party, they would support the end of democracy. There are several users on Twitter in particular that made this very clear. I want to read a few of them to you. I am a conservative, always admired Reagan. I don't like the, quote, woke progressive left and supported DeSantis in the primary. I know Harris is a lib and never liked her. But last night made it obvious to me that Harris has more respect for our institutions, our cultural norms and for our American traditions than Trump. He is so awful. It makes her look Reagan-esque. When Harris said Trump's own generals, his secretary of defense, joint chiefs of staff and national security advisor won't support him and say he's dangerously unfit, a disgrace and a wannabe dictator. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom worked with you, and they say you're a disgrace. Trump immediately perked up and went on a weird rant about how Viktor Orban, an Eastern European autocrat, loves him and tells him how strong he is and how much he likes him. Viktor Orban, one of the most respected men, they call him a strong man. He's a he's a tough person. He said, because you need Trump back as president. They were afraid of him. This guy is just completely un-American and has no idea or understanding of what makes our country what it is, what makes a republic and what democracy means. He doesn't understand service or the role of a citizen statesman. He truly admires dictators and autocrats like Xi and Putin and Orban more than anyone on our own team. He admires the characteristics of tyrants that Americans historically despised and fought against at every turn. It is in our shared culture, our American DNA, to hate the type of people Trump loves. 
We all know he called to terminate the Constitution and led a seditious fake elector plot and a riot at the Capitol in an attempt to overturn the election. He's clearly completely insane and unfit. Just blows my mind that anyone is still supporting this treasonous lying fool. He is so completely un-American. Lord willing, Harris will beat this fool in a landslide. The GOP can rebuild into more of a party and less of a cult. And we can be done with this sad, sorry chapter in American political history. And this is what one other person replies saying, quote, I always thought the GOP was more anti-Russia than pro-Trump. I was wrong. MAGA is so far down the rabbit hole that they would justify a Russian invasion into the U.S. if Trump told them it was okay. That last one, that MAGA would support an invasion of the United States if Donald Trump said it was okay, this has become painfully clear when you consider how MAGA has fallen over themselves to show support for Vladimir Putin in this invasion. I want you to listen to this tweet by MAGA influencer Gunther Eagleman, who was in the press room, the war room for Donald Trump last night during the debate. So this isn't just some random MAGA influencer. This is someone who's so close to Donald Trump that he was a part of the debate team last night. And this is what he said in regards to Putin. Quote, dear Putin, I hope this post finds you well. I wanted to let you know that a majority of Americans do not support the funding of Ukraine. We do, however, have a few that believe everything the U.S. government and media tells them. We call them sheep. These sheep are incapable of thinking for themselves and lack any common sense. I ask, don't blame us for the sheep and their actions. Signed, Real Americans. This is absolutely bananas. The fact that we have Americans who are looking at Vladimir Putin, a murderous dictator who has assassinated any opposition that rose up against him, who has invaded Ukraine, who has poisoned leaders in Ukraine. They are throwing their support behind Vladimir Putin all because Donald Trump told them to. So, yes, that last tweet I read when they said that. MAGA would support an invasion of the U.S. if Donald Trump said it was OK. It's already in the making. There are traitors amongst us who would go along with Donald Trump and his love and fealty and support for Vladimir Putin. Even if Vladimir Putin wanted to invade the United States of America, they have made that clear. And Kamala Harris made that extremely clear last night. It is well known that he admires dictators, wants to be a dictator on day one, according to himself. It is well known that he said of Putin that he can do whatever the hell he wants and go into Ukraine. It is well known that he said when Russia went into Ukraine, it was brilliant. It is well known he exchanged love letters with Kim Jong Un. And it is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear they can manipulate you with flattery and favor. It is so refreshing. And I am so glad and I am so grateful to know that there are Republicans who and conservatives who reject MAGA. There are there are Republicans and conservatives who reject Donald Trump. There are conservatives and Republicans who can see what is going on and say that they are willing to put country over party. They are not willing to go down this rabbit hole with Donald Trump to overturn and destroy democracy all for the ego of one man, all so that they can own the libs. I am so grateful that there are Americans who can see through this and are willing to do the difficult thing, which is to change their mind. It is so difficult to change your mind when you have believed something for so long. But when the evidence piles up and you see who Donald Trump really is, you see where his loyalties really lie and you see that his entire cult of personality of MAGA, they have decided to betray the United States of America. It is critical. It is crucial 
that we make alliances with them, even if it's only temporary, even if we all go back, which we probably will and we probably should because we disagree on too much. There, there's just too much that we disagree on, but it is too important to save democracy so that we all can live to fight another day. When you have a president, you have a former president who wants to become president again, who is willing to use political violence, who's willing to use lies, who's willing to betray the United States of America and a ally with dictators and not only ally with dictators, but not be smart enough to keep it to himself, but rather brag about it on the international stage. That lets you know that we are in danger, America, and we absolutely must unify with real Americans all around this country, regardless of political party, regardless of what we disagreed on in the past, we must unite to destroy MAGA and relegate them to the dustbin of history. Make them go back into the dregs of society where they are ashamed to show their face and we can build a future where we might fight about policy. We might fight and disagree about cultural issues. We may not see eye to eye on just about anything, but we can see eye to eye on democracy itself. We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon show right after this. The world going through it outside ain't unruly, but I keep it cool, they can't press me. I keep it pure with intention. They see what I'm on, it don't vex them. I might slide through with that top down. I keep it tuned with a high power. Put it on me, I'm blessed. Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at thebenjamindixonshow.com. Yep. Welcome back. Welcome back. It was, again, last night was a spectacular performance by Kamala Harris. Donald Trump really showed the world who he is. He is a child, a man child with no impulse control. He has no control over his, his, his ego, his, um, his impulse. He, he, just, he just can't control himself. And Kamala Harris really took advantage of that. She really dangled bait out there and he took it every single time. I think there's a tweet from years ago where Hillary Clinton said, you don't want a president who can be baited by a tweet. You certainly don't want a president who can can't even pick up on the fact that she, that he's being toyed with. Kamala Harris toyed with Donald Trump last night. And every time she put the bait out there, he took it. There were several times that Donald Trump could have really knocked her out of the park on a couple of things because she didn't answer every question directly, but she did what politicians do, which is answer the question they want to answer. But as she answered however she wanted to answer and they were, you know, she did a great job on that. She always gave just a little bit more that would poke and strike his ego. And whenever she did that, he could not help but to talk about himself. She, he, he could not help but to make it about him. And from the very beginning of the debate all the way through for two hours, it was an embarrassment for MAGA. And now, now here's the thing. There are people, as I said in the last segment, there are people who are coming to terms with this. Uh, Republicans who are shifting and coming over to the Democratic side for this election. Um, and that's well and good. Uh, I don't know how long those those um, those moments of unity are going to last. I don't suspect they will. I don't it actually I honestly don't want them to because I do not want the Democratic Party to start to uh, negotiate further to the right than they already are. But again, it's important for this moment so that we can not only identify those people who will stand by Donald Trump no matter what, but we can make sure that those people never get power. There are people who would look at last night's debate and would say that Donald Trump did a good job. They, they really are lying to themselves because they are as deluded as Donald Trump is. And this is very dangerous, folks. I, I just can't stress enough their intentions, what they want to do to American democracy, what they want to do to immigrants, what they want to do to black people, what they want to do to women. Oh, my goodness. The things that they want to do. 
should be terrifying enough. But when you see the delusions that they are under and they're willing to intentionally place themselves under just so that they can, quote unquote, own the libs, just so that they can never admit that they were wrong about something. These are the worst people on the face of the planet, and they only want to get even worse. They want to go even further. They want to add violence to what they do. And if we don't stop them dead in their tracks right now, it will be too late, which is why I don't have a lot of bandwidth this time around for people who are like, oh, you can't bully me into voting third party. And uh, da, da, da. Uh, no, I'm not trying to bully you into doing anything. Do whatever you want to do. But if you can't see the stakes, then perhaps we, we never really were comrades and allies. The stakes are too high. They are very clear on what they want to do. Yes, the Democratic Party is extremely problematic. Yes, there are issues that I disagree with them on severely. What's happening in Gaza is the number one issue on the list of things that I, I, I'm enraged over because the Democrats have supported it this far. The, the amount of power that Benjamin Netanyahu and AIPAC and the Likud party have such that they could command this type of genocide and Americans can't do anything but look at it. That is infuriating. That is at the top of my list. But I also know very well that there are people in the United States of America who wear the label of MAGA, who want to do the same thing in the United States of America. They dream about it. They talk about it. They tweet about it. They go into social media spaces about it. They go into all of they, they, they are organizing around that concept. And so I, I just, you know, whatever your issue is, whatever your primary issue is, there's nothing that we can do about it if we allow Rep MAGA to put the nail in the coffin of democracy and then to do so around a person last night who showed that not only is he not loyal to the United States of America, he's not loyal to democracy, but even beyond that, he has no self-control and he is an extremely angry and dangerous individual. That is the that is the core part. That's the biggest problem. No one can look at the performance that Donald Trump gave last night and say that this man is not dangerous. He's equally dangerous because of his ego, because of his pride, because of his arrogance. Yes, because of his betrayal of democracy. Yes, but also because he has no self-control and because he believes he believes his own lies. He believed the cat eating story so much so that he said it on the international stage he does not have the wherewithal even on his best day to serve as the president of the united states of america the cat story folks he actually got on stage and said that they were eating cats in springfield the most racist lie of them all but the most absurd and ludicrous lie of the ball he fell right into it which I, I know I'm out of time and I, I don't want to get out of here, but I, I meant to say this early and I, I want to just take a moment to say this. You get a few, a few extra minutes here because this is important. The efficiency with which MAGA executed this lie about the cats and the dogs in Springfield, that was terrifying. That's another example of why we can't allow them to get power. They took a Facebook social media post and turned it into a nationwide story that was so prominent that their dear leader didn't know the difference between reality and fiction. And he said it on the debate stage. He did that to himself. They did that to them, to him, because they were so efficient. If we give them a chance to do this again, if we give them power, imagine how they would be able to spread any, any lie to the heights of power and get actual action out of it. Actual policies will be made based on this level of lie. That's what was so terrifying about the Haitian cat lie that they made up. It's because of how fast and efficiently they spread it. And I hope, and I'm going to play this clip, I hope that this is all we remember of MAGA. This, this clip went viral already. It's a super viral on social media already. I hope that when this is all said and done, we can look back at the spring in Springfield. We can look back at this, this Haitian cat lie 
and see how dumb Donald Trump was to bring it up on the international stage, as well as how it becomes it became a testament to Republicans being so efficient with their lies that they tripped themselves up. I mean, how apropos, how absolutely a masterful end to an entire decade of us having to live through the lies. We can sum it all up like this. We're the sauce on your steak. We're the cheese in your cake. We put the spring in Springfield. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the pets in Springfield. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.